Getting Ready for PALS, Part 1, The Systematic Assessment. This video is the first of three videos intended to get you ready for the Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, certification. PALS is for providers such as nurses, paramedics, and doctors who direct advanced life support. This video defines, then simulates, a patient interaction to help you apply the PALS systematic approach algorithm. My instructor used to tell me, patients don't just die, they tell you first. How do they tell you? By us, as healthcare providers, systematically assessing patients and their... The best approach to caring for a seriously ill or injured child is a systematic one. The purpose of this organized approach is to enable you to quickly recognize signs of respiratory distress, respiratory failure, and shock so that you can provide life-saving interventions. Your first step is the initial impression. Here's an example of how it works. The initial impression is your very first quick observation. What you see and hear when you first encounter the child before you even touch him will determine how you proceed. Questions you want to ask yourself are, how does the child look? Is the child breathing normally? And if not, what is different about the breathing? Is the child's color good? Does the child interact? Is the child conscious? Are there any obvious outward signs of circulatory problems? Any change in skin color or bleeding? Basically, in the initial impression, you evaluate the child quickly for any obvious life-threatening conditions. If there's no life-threatening condition, you will proceed with a systematic approach, the Evaluate, Identify, Intervene sequence. If now or at any time during the initial impression you find that the child has a life-threatening condition, you should immediately begin resuscitation or other appropriate interventions and activate the emergency response. Use the Evaluate, Identify, Intervene sequence when caring for a seriously ill or injured child. This will help you to determine the best treatment or intervention at any point. From the information gathered during your evaluation, identify the clinical condition of the child by type and severity. Intervene with appropriate actions. Then repeat the sequence. This process is ongoing. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hey, Liam, I just need to take a look at you, okay? The first step of the evaluation is the primary assessment. The primary assessment uses an ABCDE approach. ABCDE stands for airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure. The primary assessment is a hands-on evaluation. Here, you assess respiratory, cardiac, and neurologic function to identify the problem. This assessment includes evaluation of vital signs and oxygen saturation by pulse oximetry. Following the primary assessment, you should identify the child's condition, decide what interventions, if any, need to be started at this time, and implement these as appropriate. The secondary assessment consists of two components. The first component is a focused history, which can easily be remembered by using the mnemonic sample, which stands for signs and symptoms, allergies, medications, past medical history, last meal or liquids consumed, events leading to the presentation. One goal of the secondary assessment history or sample history is to identify important aspects of both the child's history and presenting complaints, especially any information that might help explain the child's presenting problem. The second component is a focused physical exam. The thoroughness of the physical examination is based on the patient's presenting symptoms and history. At times, a complete head-to-toe examination may be deferred until serious conditions are adequately treated or to avoid excessively agitating a child with upper airway obstruction, for example. The diagnostic test uses ancillary studies to identify problems and guide treatments. This includes tests such as laboratory studies, x-rays, arterial blood gases, and an ECG. The diagnostic test is important for the thorough evaluation of any sick or injured child in order to determine a plan of intervention. 
The next step of the Evaluate Identify Intervene sequence is Identify. You need to identify any illness as either respiratory, circulatory, or a combination of both and identify the severity of the illness. Respiratory problems can be categorized into four groups. Upper airway obstruction, lower airway obstruction, lung tissue disease, and disorder control of breathing. The severity of a respiratory problem may be respiratory distress or respiratory failure. Circulatory problems can be caused by arrhythmias or shock. The child should be placed on a cardiac monitor to look for arrhythmias such as bradycardia or tachycardia. Shock is further categorized into four groups. Hypovolemic, obstructive, distributive septic, and cardiogenic. The severity of shock may be compensated or hypotensive. Remember that critically ill or injured children deteriorate rapidly, so one category of problems may lead to others. On the basis of your evaluation and identification of the type and severity of illness, decide what needs to be done. This is the intervention step. Your decision should be dictated by your scope of practice. When you do act based on your decision, actions may range from providing basic life support to specific advanced life support interventions. Remember, throughout your evaluation, always look for any life-threatening conditions. If a life-threatening condition is recognized at any time, immediately begin life-saving interventions, activate the emergency response, and follow the pediatric cardiac arrest algorithm. Signs and Symptoms